What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to grow microgreens at home. Now what I've done was I've gone on Amazon and picked up a fairly cheap $24 microgreen growing kit with everything that you need to grow these little things. I don't know why I'm calling them little things. They're not really little things. They're just greens and they're edible, perfect on salads, sandwiches, lots of great uses. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Let's go ahead, start the unboxing and show you how to grow these microgreens. And so here we have it. The Amazon package has arrived, came in two days, which is awesome. And from what I understand, these guys are actually shipping out of the East Coast in Canada. So let's go ahead and tear this thing open and get growing. So here we have it. This is the microgreen four pack. That means it comes with four different varieties of microgreens and everything you need to get growing. So let's go ahead, open this pack up and we'll show you what's inside. Oh, there we have the zesty, zesty mix. Let's go ahead and pull this stuff out. And we'll get rid of this packaging here because we don't need that. So the first thing we have, our instruction pamphlet, everything in there will outline how to grow your microgreens. Up next, we have some of our seeds. First one is the zesty radish. I heard this is a little spicy, which I look forward to. And then we have our tangy choy. And we're just missing two packs and there they are. This one is the peas please variety. And last but not least, the sweet greens. There's some broccoli, kale. I look forward to this one as well. Now we have our tips and troubleshooting guide. And this is our grow medium. So this is a coconut husk, which I believe it is. Um, and on the bottom, there seems to be like a waxy paper. And this is what the seeds will actually root into. So there we got four of them there. And now we have our growing saucer. Um, it's not too big. It's perfect for our desktop. There's the Micro Farmer logo on the back. And that's really it. So let's go ahead and start growing. All right, guys, so we're about to start this growing process. Let's go ahead and open up our instruction booklet to see what comes first. All right, so week one is the sowing process. What it says there, pour half a cup of water, which I already have. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that tray up. Now the water that I'm using is room temperature. And nothing special, just right out of the tap. So let's grab one of our growing medium pads and we're gonna put it face down or white side down into the growing tray. Let's go ahead and pour the water in. And then pay, place the growing pad white side down. Now the instructions say you should take your fingers and depress the growing pad into the water so it absorbs as much as it can. Pretty much until it's 100% saturated. So let's go ahead and just kind of poke around. And just about done. Now 
Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going for the Zesty Radish. And pretty much all you have to do now is open up this packet and spread the seeds out evenly around the growing tray. And that's all there's to it guys. So that's kind of the density that you want as well as the spread. I feel like that is pretty even. There's no high spots and there's not really too many bare spots which is perfect. Alright guys so what we're going to do next is we're going to take this growing tray with our seeds that we have in it now and we're going to put it in a dark place. What I'm going to do is actually cover it with a piece of cardboard and then we'll come back to it in a few days. Alright, so here we have it. This is only two days in to the process. And look what our seeds have turned into. They've all sprouted. Now what you'll notice, and what I noticed, was after only the first day, many of these seeds actually cracked. And then, like we see now, a day after, they've grown this much. So I'm going to stop the camera now and we'll follow up in a few more days. Alright guys, this is day four. Quite a significant amount of growth. All of our seeds seems to be growing vertically now. They all look pretty healthy. I can't see any any burning on them. And as you can see, many of the actual, um, I guess now, microgreens, we're not going to call them seedlings anymore, have shed most of their shells, which is going to be nice. Not going to have any of those crunchy shells in any of our sandwiches or whatever we're using these with. So I quite like that. So let's go ahead, turn the camera off, and we'll follow up in a few more days. Alright guys, this is day six. Our microgreens don't look too happy, and that's actually my fault didn't follow the instructions. You're supposed to really keep on the watering schedule, make sure this thing does not dry out. Um, and unfortunately, I did that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna top up our water, wait two more days, and see if these recover. All right, and two days later, look what our microgreens look like. They've all recovered, everything looks super healthy, and the canopy, looking just from the top is quite dense and that's what I like so um, yeah this is great five stars that was the easiest thing to grow only I think it was eight days altogether seven or eight days and this is what we got all right guys so here we have it what we're gonna do is start our harvest as you can see from the video before we're ready to go. We could probably let these things grow a little bit longer, but I'm scared that they're gonna become super leggy and that's not what I want. So you can harvest this in two ways. First, you want a pair of scissors and then you can either chop them kind of right down here along that edge or alternatively, you can do this, just pick them up. They are suspended in water so let all that water drain off, as you can see that's happening there. This coconut fiber is super water retentive. There's all of our roots under there. How crazy does that look? Now that we've got that water drained out, we could remove that tray and voila this is what we're left with 
you can see all those roots. Look at that. How cool is that? So what I like to do to ensure that we have the most economical, I'm not going to call it economical, I'm going to call it efficient yield, I am going to take my scissors and cut right above this cocoa mat. There we go. We put these aside. I'm taking our paper towel roll out. And we'll continue cutting. Now, if you get any roots like that, you can just snip them off. I know some people who actually do eat the roots. I don't think it's going to kill you but I prefer not to eat them. All right, guys, so here we have it, our final harvest. What we're gonna do, um, and we'll do this off camera, we're gonna wash these with cold water and then put them in paper towel. So we'll put in our paper towel sheet on top of that and put them in the fridge and we're good to go. Now these typically will last about a week in the fridge. Um, I typically go through them a lot faster because they are extremely delicious. This is a blend. It's actually a spicy blend. And I'll put a link in the description below. These things have a good kick to them. I didn't think they were going to be that spicy, but they're really good and I highly recommend them. They work well on salads, in sandwiches, like I said before. A whole whack load of uses. You can even garnish soups with them, which is quite nice. Now, if you guys have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.